Hey friends, welcome back to another Godot tutorial. My name is Jacob, and maybe sometimes when you're using the Godot engine you find yourself wishing that you could change things around without having to run your game. Sometimes you don't want to go through the whole process of loading everything up in your game, hit and play, and, you know, hoping for the right circumstances to occur. Well, there's a cool built-in feature of the Godot engine called tool scripting, and these allow you to run code in the editor. Now, this is a very simplified look at tool scripting, and I'll build on this in a couple more videos that I have planned. So sit back, relax, and uh, I'll teach you a little bit about tool script. So first off, let's. this is a new project, by the way. All I did was add an asset that I'll use later, and I made a main scene, but I'm not gonna end up doing anything with it, I don't think. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new uh, scene. This is going to be called, let's just say, Cookie. And this will inherit from Spray. So here we have our cookie scene, and let's go ahead and make a script. Cookie inherits from Sprite. I will say no comments, because that's what I like to do, but do whatever you want, of course. So extend Sprite, this is normal, but with tool scripts, you have to input a special tool keyword somewhere. I always put it before extends. I'm not sure if you have to. Every one that I've seen use tool scripts does put it before your inherit so uh there you go try it out let me know the thing with tool scripts to remember though is that when it's added to the scene tree in the editor uh, this ready function will be called as well as when it enters the scene tree in your game so there are a couple ways to get around that if you only want code to run when it enters in the game or vice versa when it enters in the editor you can add a line that's if so this line if engine is editor hint means that if the editor is running which right now it is so if the cookie scene enters the scene tree in the editor this will fire however if you're running the game this won't fire so if you want to uh i like to say if maybe if the engine is not running then you can i don't know initialize data or whatever what have you uh, this is an important line that we will use later it's also important to remember that um, the functions process and of course physics process it's mad at me because i didn't put a line after process these are both running every frame that this is in the scene tree so it's running right now um, which this is this can be a problem especially if you're doing a lot of processes this can easily crash your editor so these lines are very important if you don't want to be uh crashing your game let's go ahead and take ready out so we're not going to be using it so in the process function uh, if you don't know the difference between these two process functions by the way uh essentially the editor the engine decides has an order of when everything is going to go when all the scenes are going to have their turn and this process function is every idle frame whereas this physics process uh runs every physics idle frame so uh you can decide which is best for your game for instance some things like uh control nodes or gui elements should probably be in just process functions because they don't have anything to do with physics excuse me but if you have scenes like a uh, player scene or especially in like 3d games you'll want this to be based on the physics process because your physics idle frame you need to wait for that uh regardless i'm just going to use the process function and here we have uh let's just say if the engine is running the editor is running rather let's return so that right now it's not going to be doing anything so then we can do things with a cookie in the game however I'll take this out for now. I'll just comment it out. And what we can see is we have an error because it's mad at me. Let's go ahead and fill in this texture while I'm thinking about it. Just pull this cookie texture right in. 
I'm going to go ahead and oh, filter is on, which is an issue for pixel arts. That's a handy little thing. Uh, you can set a preset uh, if you would like to keep that filter off. But for pixel art, it can look a little uh, muddled if you have the filter on, which it is by default. I'm going to make this a little bigger just so I can see it. And then right now we just have a cookie, right? Well, the cool thing about this is if we have uh, scripts, let's just say rotation degrees plus, e oops, plus equals 90 times delta. And delta is the uh, time that has passed since the last idle frame. So uh, this is one way to keep everything in your game running smoothly. So right now, rotation degrees should be changing. Uh, it's not. Yep, all I had to do was reload the scene, and here we go. I'm not doing anything, not touching my keyboard, and you can see over in the corner that the uh, rotation degrees are uh, moving. There we go. And this is happening every idle frame, just gonna keep getting larger and larger. Cool, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, what's a practical application for this? Uh, of course, sure, you can have your cookie rotating until the end of time. But in my own game, I have maybe say, export vector two, bar tile. So now we have this tile and then I say, set get, set tile. Oops. Uh, set gets I have touched in my previous videos a couple times, but set gets essentially allow you to define your own setters and getters for your variables. Uh, right now, this is just the setter. If I wanted to do a getter, I can do that as well, but I have no need to at this point. Uh, oops, vector two. Silly little mistake. So the first thing to do in a set get, and of course, set gets will run normally in your code whenever you set your tile, right? So if you say anywhere in your code, if you say tile equals four, or tile equals three, if you miss the four key, then this function will be called instead of just setting this normally. So what you need to make sure that you're doing is setting your uh, tile equal to new tile, set your variable to the new variable because that's what always happens in a setter. But also with set gets, you can apply new functionality. So for instance, in this function, you could say uh, your position, which of course this is, self position equals, uh, let's just say that you have a tile map, which we don't at the moment, but we could easily make one. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and do it for, uh, for our purposes, demonstration purposes. Let's do a new scene. Let's just do my tile map, bad naming conventions, but you know, whatever. Make this a tile map. We have this grid, cool. Uh, now, what we're going to do is, uh, let's say that the cookie is inherited. Uh, let's say, instance child scene, instance the cookie scene, so your cookie is now on here. I'm gonna change this so that it's just one, maybe. Actually, that's pretty small. Let's do two. So here we have our cookie, and uh, here we have our tile map, which uh, we have instance the cookie on. So on our cookie, script now we can say our uh let's say on ready bar uh my tile map equals get parent of course uh this is going to have issues for any uh cookies that are not on the tile map so uh keep that in mind this is just an example my tile map map to world new tile. So tile maps have a function. Here's the tile map scene, uh, tile map class rather. Map to world returns the local position of the top left corner of the cell responding to the given tile map based coordinates. So what does that mean in our context? Well, if we input our new tile, the tile that we want this cookie to be at, then it'll set the position to whatever those, uh, the actual X, Y coordinates of that uh, are. So let's take a look, see if this works, see if I'm not a Total idiot. So we have our cookie, we have our tile. Let's set this equal to five, five. Oops, 
Okay, so I was a little silly. I still had the process function here, so I went ahead and took that out, and I was setting the tile equal to three because I was demonstrating things and forgot to remove it. Have tile printing, which is a problem. Uh, all you have to do is remember that once you change a tool script, I set my uh, editor, uh, my editor hotkey for this reload save scene to control R. I recommend you doing that because once you change any tool scripts, any editor plugin scripts or scenes. Uh, they're inherently going to have uh, a little bit of an issue and will need to be reloaded before they will show the right uh, things. So everything is working. I'll reload it just for the fun of it. Yes, down here you do see there's a non non-existent function map to world and base nil because this cookie scene is alone, doesn't have a parent. So um, potentially maybe you should move this down here. Say if get parent is not equal to null, then we can set yeah, parent. that's easy enough right now we're not gonna have the error here we go and instead we can say let's say it's a zero zero and move the cookie down so awesome i think that's a great way of doing things if you need to set things on your tile map if you're doing a 2d game set things around move things around very uh easy to do it this way this is what 11 lines of code and uh easily replicable. I will put this uh, code in the comments if you would like uh, to parody this at your leisure. I hope this was helpful. I hope you uh, can see kind of the power of tool scripts. They give you a lot of flexibility and um, power within the editor itself without having to play your game. And when I discovered tool scripts, it really changed how I develop in the Godot engine. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, in the next video, I think we're going to be doing some editor plugin tutorials, so stay tuned for that. I will catch you all later.